Good morning, folks. I'm Ron with JNRH Railroad. Going to run through some modifications on an old Atherton F7A diesel. And uh, this particular footage will be in segments, and I'm going to dedicate uh, this to my two adopted grandsons, Cameron and Dion, who are not here with me, and to my grandson, Addison. So hopefully in the future when they get to, to working on these engines, they'll have something to look back on and see how things are supposed to go or don't go. Okay, with that said, we're going to go to work on these engines and we're going to start with the Santa Fe. We have two Santa Fe F7A units here. I've broken them down and hopefully the cameraman will be able to focus in and give you a little idea what this looks like. In these old engines, and they are in the 80s and maybe 70s vintage, uh, most of the Atherins are on a chassis that resembles this. They're a casting. They're very good. The wheels are exceptional in that there's really not any plastic. All of these are castings. It allows you to, uh, let me get my pointer here, it allows you to to do things and not have to worry about damaging them so much. The F7s come with, uh, all of them that I found come with a weight and it sits on top of the motor assembly. And in this particular model, I'm not going to use this weight. I feel like that there will be um, adequate traction power. We're going to find out. Hopefully it will. If not, then we'll have to figure out what to do with that weight. So right now I'm just going to take it off. And the Atherins, all the Atherins that I've been exposed to have um, the motor uh, makes a negative contact uh, to the DC pickup using the chassis. Here's one I removed from an old F7. This is pretty old. You see the difference in the two motors. Underneath is the uh, copper contacts that press against a scraped off piece in the bottom of the chassis and that's where it makes one side of its uh, DC contact. That has to be insulated uh, absolutely or you will have major problems. Now these engines come with some old style motor mounts and this is another similar uh, chassis. Well it is the same as this F7. <coughs> um, the way you can tell these is they'll have a yellow color to them. And they're a plastic and they're basically dry rotted. So what we want to do is we're going to remove that. It's got to come out and we'll put a, a new mounting in it. And you're really not going to tear too much up. You just get a hold of it. And you see that just shattered. The camera can get a close up. See how that plastic mount, it just shatters. And you have to put new ones in. Atherin has new mounts available. Uh, they can be ordered from the Atherin facility in California. And the part number on those I'll share with you is um, it's an Atherin ATH84026. ATH84026. And it's called a motor mount pad. And it takes two of them per engine. Now, at the same time, you want to order the screws that go with these. That takes four of the screws, and I'll have one of those out here in just a minute, and I'll have the part number for them. But you've got to have those screws. When you get to this point, all you have to do now is just pop out these remaining mounts. And sometimes you may want to take a little mallet and tap them out, and then they go to the garbage. So now what you have is this. And what you we haven't showed you, and we will do it on this one, um, the particular one F7 I'm working on, I'm already insulated. And any small vinyl tape will do the job. It doesn't have to be, actually it doesn't have to be anything special, but if you can get it about this width, uh, and I think Lowe's or Home Depot will sell some like this. And so you just install that tape over that area. And I use a chopstick. And you can buy these chopsticks pretty much 
anywhere, or a grocery store, Walmart, uh, or go to a Chinese restaurant and pick you up a couple. Of them. And you work that in. And you we'll want to use two uh, layers just to ensure. The additional step you've got to take, <clears throat> an important step. I'm trying to do this slow, and the camera can zoom in. Hopefully, we got some light. You want to push these down, and I suppose you could break them off. You can snap them back and work them until they break, but I just push them down because if you don't, they're pretty sharp and they are going to press into that tape. And I'll put one more uh, set of tape on this thing and that'll keep this motor insulated. Now the mounts, uh, I'm not going to go through installing it, but I am going to show you just a little bit of the problems that you can run into. If you have some uh, tweezers like this, these are good. And these mounts will snap onto the base of the motor. Let's see if we can get this up. So what you'll wind up with is uh, a mount that slides in like that on each side. And then it will screw in from the bottom. And it's uh, plastic, so when the screw goes into it, it expands it, and that's what holds it tight. That puts you in business. Okay, now with the uh, Atherins, almost every Atherin engine that I've found will have the front pickup will be a metal bar that comes up. It's bratted onto the chassis, and that's a problem. It's in the way, and it needs to get out of there. Now, Atherin uses, uh, and you'll see on yours, um, a metal contact strip that goes across the motor and down, and it rides on this wiper here to pick up uh, one side of the power. That you won't use when you go to the DCC conversion. You've got to get rid of this thing somehow or another, and I recommend using safety glasses a Dremel tool works well. Dremel makes um, a general purpose cutting wheel that is heavy enough that it will cut that off. Take your time with it. The very thin cutting wheel, the one that you would use to cut rail with, will break. It will shatter. So when you take this thing outside someplace and you just come after this and you score that. and It will just cut through very clean. And when you get through with it, what you're going to wind up with is a piece of metal that's cut off. Now, in this particular one that I'm working on, a little more fortunate we were able to get that metal piece off of that rivet. It wasn't on there tight. It was actually caused loose connections. As a result of the loose connection problem, keep in mind, you may have to do this to get a good ground, a good, a good tie to the chassis drill out and set a screw in and later as we go through I'll show you how to use a, uh, a brass washer that this screw will go through and you solder your wire to it and it makes a great connection and I'll show you a finished job. Alright, with that said, I'm going to move over to, this is the cover of one that has had uh, no modifications to it. And Atherin, most of them have a dummy headlight in here. Sometimes they'll have a second one down in the bottom. If they do, and you choose to do so, you can very easily insert a 5 millimeter LED, white LED, into that light. And it's, it's almost a perfect fit. Uh, if it's a little short of, of fitting, you can use uh, any round-tailed file. I've got one here somewhere. I don't have to find it. Oh, here it is. And you can go in with that file. And you can actually hone that spot out, just go around it to make it a little bit larger. It doesn't take much. The LED is a problem for me on how I get it to stay in. So, what seems to work the best, um, and I don't recommend using 
super glue because should you want to get it out of there now you really do have a problem. Elmer's white glue works good. Um, takes a little while to set up. You can always get it out with a little water on it if you need to. Most of the time it doesn't adhere that tight to the plastic. You can actually push out the LED and start over again. What I have been using, and it's available just almost any hobby shop, is a product called Tacky Glue. And it's tacky and it dries invisible. That's what is on this one. And uh, it's not totally invisible, I guess you can see that there. But that's our front LED light. Now, what's a little different on this unit is that we have located uh, what's called surface mounted LEDs, SMLEDs. They're very tiny, and I don't know if the camera will zoom in, but that's the LED, that's a white light LED, and that one's a white light LED. And then we've installed a red LED on the top. Now, there's a little difficult problem that comes with these LEDs, uh, the ones that I purchased, they come with a resistor already on the positive lead at the proper value, which is very good because these wires are very tiny. They're like number 32 gauge, and 30 is tiny enough. So in order to get the LED and the resistor through the hole, um, I get into the situation with I have to drill a big hole to put the resistor through, but I got to have a pretty good size hole to get that LED through because it is square, but still it has to go through that, that hole. Don't worry about if you get it a little big because you can take any kind of plastic stock you got from kits or anything um, black. Uh, you're careful, you nip it out and make it look like a patch cover on it. There's all kinds of ways to fix it. We'll show you on some other engines later, another session, what it looks like. You, you can't tell it. These uh, particular conversion, I have one other point I want to mention. We use a, uh, this was done 20 years ago when I did this one, uh, a bridge rectifier. And that was basically because we were operating off of DC and so when we wanted to uh, deal with polarity changes for the LED, they were sensitive to polarity. Uh, we had to come up with a way that we always had a positive signal. And that's a bridge rectifier, a little integrated circuit, very cheap. Uh, and using some little circuit board uh, from Radio Shack, uh, we were able to build up some resistors uh, for the different colored LEDs. The white light required a different value. Uh, red required another value. Red's usually about 680 and white is about 2700 ohms. Now that's what I use. One of the problems that we got into with the surface mounted LEDs besides the resistor was the small tiny wires. So what we found to work fairly well is to use some very small heat shrink tubing that will go over the resistor and actually I have some right here in this little clothespin. These tiny clothespins work good to hold that. And you can feed those through one at a time. Then you take uh, low temp glue gun works very good. And you get a little daub of hot glue where you want that piece of uh, uh, material to go. The heat shrink tubing will shrink a little bit, but the main thing is it sticks to that glue the wire is loose and you can move the wire inside it. You don't want it to tighten up. You can't move it if it does. So, other problem on the F7 chassis were with the couplers. I did not have a old style coupler that they had, but you'll know it if you've got one of them. Uh, the couplers uh, sit in this area and there's a snap cover that goes over and it's always a problem to get to because you can't get your fingers in there. So I simply drilled out uh, both of these coupler ends and I'm using some KD box couplers that are what they call a box and they're just great and we'll show you those on another engine and you just set those in there tighten that screw up anytime you gotta get into the coupler it's, it's very easy to do. That pretty much uh, will wrap up where we are at this point we'll come back at another time 
and uh, show you how we test the lights. Very important to test the lights, these LEDs, uh, before you get all this tightened up because once you get it tightened up and then you find out you got it wrong polarity or something, it's, it's a problem. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll catch you on the next one. That's all folks.